What's up, y'all? Hey, Akira. I actually took notes this time. Usually I just get on here and wing it with, with the uh, Real Housewives, but <laughs> it's the title for you. Girl, Giselle, poor Giselle. I'm not even going to say poor Giselle because she low-key deserved it, but it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart. I can't lie because I low-key like Giselle, um, but um, I can't lie like she didn't deserve it. So, oh, it was just hard to watch. It was hard to watch. Where's my binder? I got my iPad. I, I got my stuff on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> what's up natalie what's up ll <laughs> y'all that was painful that was painful what's up cliff let me tell you something it i if i was just there i probably would have just ran off this stage <laughs> she, she gonna cry in the car Oh my goodness, it's painful. I hate cringy moments too, y'all. Like, I'm one of those people that when a cringy moment comes up on a TV show or like on a movie or something, I have to literally pause it and like, you know, clear my head and try to watch it again. Like, I'm I'm one of those people. I can't cringy moments like that. Ooh. But I just I I had to see this. I love it because I know this live will be fun like shade. Yeah, I, I mean it honestly, cause I don't want to get on here and roast anybody. I, you know, I'm not Monique. <laughs> and but you know, Giselle also didn't do anything to me. So um yeah, I don't want it to be like super heavy. It should just be <laughs> it should just be fun, even though some of the stuff she said was not fun. Um Girl, Karen eviscerated Giselle, then Monique came in and finished her. Yeah. They tag team. Definitely. Hey, Princess Fula. Uh, <laughs> I missed you, too. Missed you, too. Yeah, I'm back, y'all. I'm back, y'all. I missed y'all. I had to take a break, but I'm back. Okay, so um, I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to go through my notes. Dang, I took more notes than I thought. But um, yeah, I just want to talk about the reunion. That's what Monique should have done instead of putting her paws on people. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, Monique, you have, obviously you have the ability to use your words. So that's why I was just disappointed. I was more disappointed than anything that she, you know, that she went to physical when it didn't have to go there thank you follow me on tiktok i'm gonna be doing makeup stuff on there um my name on there is levita rosa underscore okay y'all it's the lashes go to my website they're on my website all right i'm just gonna go ahead and um let's get into the looks first so First of all, who chose yellow? Who chose yellow? That yellow was so ugly. I I feel like yellow isn't bad, but I I just wish they would have never chose yellow cuz I feel like that is really what messed everybody up. The yellow I don't know what to say. I just did not like that color. I yellow isn't bad, but I feel like when you're doing something like this, uh, yellow, I would have rather gold. Gold is, I feel like, would have made them look more royal, more regal. But yellow, and no, and don't get me wrong, yellow, especially on like some chocolate skin, is a pretty color, but I, I didn't like it. So, okay, Giselle looked like her dress was from a beauty supply store. And we'll get into her fashions later on, but I mean, it looked it looked like a dress straight from the beauty supply. Um, I hated Ashley's dress. And I know Ashley's pregnant, so I'm not gonna go 
do too much with Ashley, but I hated the dress. I hated how how that slit was. It just didn't it it didn't compliment her in any way. Candace's dress looked like a Christmas tree topper. Like it, just imagine if that bow was red. She looked like she belonged at the top of a Christmas tree. Um, I thought Robin's dress was fine, but I I like I even like the bob on her, but the the little extra whatever whatever the speckle was i what was that why 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 not just do the platinum blonde sleek bob why do you have to do the extra speckle i just didn't understand that you know what i'm saying those were kinky narrow dresses <laughs> yellow is a hard color to pull off <laughs> um wendy was going to prom in her dress um Karen's dress was just, I don't know. It was, I feel like it was a nice idea, poorly executed. I just don't think whoever, whoever made the dress, it just didn't seem like it was put together. Well, I see the idea, but it just, I I didn't like the way it came together at the end. Um, now, okay. So I'm going to say Monique was best dressed. I mean, obviously Monique, I feel like Monique has a good team that dresses her and she's polished you know she her dresses are always looking very expensive very chic her hair is always on point never a stiff bob never a stiff hairstyle her makeup is on point monique is just a pretty woman period and i'm not saying the other women on this cast are not pretty but she just you know she's she has a great team and um, I feel like a lot of times, Mo because Monique, you know, has the money, she clearly has the money. I'm not saying other people don't, but I think Monique, pro I feel like hands down, Monique probably makes the most or has the most money because of her husband. So she has more money to invest in her look and she, she just pulls it out every single time. Now, I do think that she's like, she's always best dressed by default because the rest of these people not good at dressing you know what i'm saying so by default it's like you know monique is gonna look the best because she just by default she don't really have no competition but if you put her next to someone like eva who tends to like really turn it out that's more of like a competition like as far as best dress goes but Monique is going to pull out best dress. I will give her that. She will pull out best dress pretty much every single time on this cast. Let's be honest. Wendy and Karen had the same dress designer. It shows. Let's get marks. <laughs> Thank you, Tyronda. Um, so I really, it, but okay, as far as Monique's look, I did like the dress from the waist up i really didn't like the bottom too much but it didn't mess up the dress for me or anything it just you know the dress was pretty i just didn't care for the bottom too much but that's just a personal preference but her bob um i feel like she could have used uh candace's ponytail it probably would have brought the dress out a little bit more but you know it was she was the best dress so it really don't matter um <laughs> so then we get into who changed the most and I didn't know whether they meant like physically or like as far as their attitude or, you know, just in general. So if we're talking about physically, definitely, I would say Karen, definitely. And um, Andy asked, has she had any like work done on her face? And she said she just had some to the tip of her nose. And, uh, and then Robin tried to call her out and say, uh, like over the years or just over, you know, the last month i was just like because she definitely has had some sort of filler i don't know much about plastic surgery and like fillers and stuff like that but you could tell she's had like a lift or a tightening or something because she does look different but it looks very natural so you know it's not like it looks bad she looks good she looks really good karen definitely looks more useful yeah she looks more useful um, Karen looks amazing for 57. Like I had to look up her age because of the whole back and forth between her and Giselle. And, um, she looks amazing for 57. So I'm not mad at it. Um, Monique said Ashley changed the most. I'm like, how did Ashley change the most? She definitely did not. She just became a mother. That's the only thing that changed about Ashley. Ashley is still just as messy 
as she always has been. And we saw that at the end of this season. Like, she did a good job of pretending until the end of this season. Um, so, what else? Um, and then they said Giselle changed the least. And I have to agree. Like, <laughs> when you did, when they did like a flashback till now, not much has changed physically and not much has changed as far as her attitude and, you know, her reading people and stuff like that. Whatever Karen did to her face, Giselle needs to, oh my goodness, no. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Ashley, Ashley had a baby face when she started. Now she looks a little older. Um, I guess. Ashley... I, 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 you could say that she, her face was a little bit more streamlined now, but Ashley pretty much looks the same to me. She didn't really change too much. I feel like she does her makeup better. That might have changed it a little bit, but other than that, she pretty much looked look the same to me. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a compliment as far as, you know, she done had, uh, she done had a baby and then pregnant with her second. So for her to, you know, it hadn't really changed her much. I, I don't know. It don't really. She, she looks the same to me personally. Um, then they got to Giselle's fashions. Giselle need just needs a stylist. Period. She needs a good stylist. She might have one, but she needs a good stylist. Um, <clears throat> she should have been listening instead of brushing everybody's off and being defensive. Like, girl, you can't dress. Everybody knows it. You're tacky. Everybody knows it. So why don't you get some tips? Why don't you actually listen to somebody and like get some like tips, some tips on style and things that would complement your body, what's in fashion? You know what I'm saying? Cause she you really could use it. Um, Wendy says she has pretty girl syndrome. And basically she doesn't have to try because she was so pretty. And I I say yes, but she thinks she doesn't have to try. But when you're on TV or surrounded by well, actually, I was going to say surrounded by people that can really dress. Not necessarily on your cast, but like the Housewives franchise. When you're surrounded by people that can dress, you know, it it makes you stand out when you cannot. So you think you don't have to try because you're pretty, but that's not the case. I, I don't even really believe that in general. Like, just because you're pretty doesn't mean you, you, you can be tacky because that could bring down your looks in a way. You know what I'm saying? Um, and she is a gorgeous woman. Don't get me wrong. She's gorgeous. But what does it have to do with your dressing? Um, uh, then they talked about Karen and her style. I think somebody said Karen was the best dress. No, no. That's why I don't understand. Like, it was funny how Karen was calling out how uh, Giselle couldn't dress. And calling her tacky and stuff like that. But Karen don't dress too much better. Like she. She she be looking nice. Like I let it go because. She is someone of a particular age. But she don't be dressing that much better than Giselle. And then Giselle called out the fact that she. Had on fake Fendi. Like girl you don't act like you just this fashionista now. Your hair has stepped up. Tremendously. I will give you that. Them wigs from first season to this season fabulous fabulous upgrade but the style come on sorority sisters were definitely standing together wendy giselle i think candace yeah i can see that i think that what wendy meant that's what wendy meant giselle just thinks she doesn't have to try <laughs> karen dresses better now yeah like i i just i don't think she dresses like just she don't, she's not on the level of Monique. Monique actually is the best dress. Monique is always best dressed. Karen has upgraded her look. Okay, we could say Karen upgraded her look, but it just, it, to me, it, it's not that much better than anyone else on the cast. Okay, so now let's see. We get to Wendy with her four degrees. Now, I don't want to take anything away from Wendy. That's uh, amazing, especially someone who um, I don't know if she's what well, is a first generation um, immigrant or if it was her mother. But regardless, no, I believe because her father named her after Wendy's his first job over here. Because I okay, so her parents were immigrants, right? 
Um, so that's amazing for her to have four degrees to be so successful. I mean, she's teaching at Johns Hopkins and she's, you know, teaching, you know, making other doctors. Okay. Um, she has a great husband. She has a beautiful family. You know what I'm saying? She's doing amazing in life. So I don't want to take any of that away from her. The problem comes in when you say, I'm not going to brag, but I got four degrees or girl, I got four degrees. You, you, you address me as doctor. You know what I'm saying? When you use it in that sort of way, you kind of use it as a weapon. That's when it's like, okay, girl, don't nobody care. Cause you're on, you're on this show with everybody else, regardless, regardless of your four degrees, you here with everybody else, whether they have a degree or not. And it doesn't really count over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you could use that in your field. That's a, I mean, it's a flex period, but it, what I'm saying is in these arguments, four degrees, they don't mean nothing in the scheme of things, you know, in the scheme of what y'all are talking about or discussing or who has the upper hand, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we love the fact that you have degrees, Wendy. It's just the fact that you use it as a weapon. Um, and also it's like those degrees like validate you in some sort of way. And I think it's because, um, you know, her mother um, pushed her to get those degrees. And I'm not saying she got the degrees because of her mother, but, you know, obviously it means a lot because she was even scared to tell her mother that she didn't want to teach there anymore. You know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, it means a lot to her and her family. And maybe it is a cultural thing. She said maybe the difference is cultural. It could be. Um, it's quite an accomplishment accomplishment to be a young tenured professor and a black woman at a prestigious university it is and i will never take it away from her i i think that's a beautiful thing and i i do look at that as a, an amazing accomplishment i noticed the nose karen looks much better with that tweak all that schooling i use it too is doctor to you okay so karen do you fix her nose yeah i mean there there's nothing wrong with being uh proud of that it's just it's just that i don't know it's just like if we're arguing about something you saying you have four degrees doesn't make you right you know what i'm saying that doesn't make you right just because you have four degrees you can't just automatically assume well yeah i won this argument because i got four degrees no like y'all get what i'm saying like i, I don't know um and then I put it does it doesn't shock me that Jenny and um Jendy, <laughs> Giselle and Wendy are AKAs. It doesn't surprise me that they're both AKAs because they they definitely have that air about them. I got tired of the four degrees over and over. Somebody the internet. Welcome back, Pinky. It's cultural, but Wendy knows when she's putting people down. Okay. Um, hello there. First time here. The title made me holler. <laughs> we gonna get to Giselle. Some people stunt their money. I'ma stunt my textbooks. I can't fight, but I can read. And there's nothing like I promise y'all. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that, but but the thing is, you know the the argument ain't gonna begin and end there like just because you have your degrees that mean you won the argument at hand you know you you winning in life though i ain't gonna lie you winning in life um she and candace have an elitist attitude i'm used to nigerians so i was kind of immune to her degrees mention oh is that like so okay i a couple of people have mentioned that's a cultural thing. I don't know many Nigerians. So um, Wendy has four degrees, but couldn't think of a better word for aggressive. <laughs> she probably, you know, you up on stage, cat got your tongue. Sometimes it's hard to think when you're on the spot like that. Uh. <laughs> okay. So let's move on. Um. So we get to Candace and they're talking about um, Candace's Twitter fingers. And this this one thing that does turn me off about Candace 
Um, I do think she kind of brings a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> Is that the right terminology? I feel like she, you know, somebody will like pluck her and she'll like be ready to like punch them with her words. No pun intended you know, for her situation, but you know what I mean? Like she goes oh, overboard, hits below the belt. And sometimes she just goes too far. She doesn't know when to reel it back in. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So she, she, I feel like she does the most when it comes to that, especially like on Twitter, because it's like, okay, girl, you have Twitter fingers. I know you'll say it in person, but she do have those Twitter fingers. Um, okay. Then they came, um, then they started talking about her song and then, uh, I believe Andy asked her, you know, well, how do you feel? Does it compares to Ashley's song? And uh, basically, she was just like, it doesn't compare because I can actually sing and she can't. <laughs> That's basically what she was saying. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think Ashley just don't like Candace, but she also is a little bit of a hater because Candace can actually sing. And, and, girl, I don't care if you perform that song everywhere. It just, you can't sing. If she can hold a tune, you can't. That's just what it comes down to. Um. Candace is very reckless with her words and it screams immaturity. Yes, that's what it is. Candace is quick to tell people it's not ladylike. Oh, yeah. She's quick to tell somebody to sh shut up and that's not ladylike. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like, she needs to grow up, like, um, and especially not be hypocritical when it comes to certain things. Because um, if you can do it, somebody else can do it, too. Um, let's see. Andy clearly don't like Candace because he kept pointing out that, you know, she has Twitter fingers and that she needs to change. Um, Ashley was whining about Candace coming at her family and talking about her child or what or whatever. And it comes on deaf ears because Ashley, you've talked about any and everybody's family on this show. You have to their face. And you've done some, like, you've said some terrible things about people in their family. So you can't be mad when somebody come at you, your family. Um, and then her and Robin got into this thing about, well, what did she say about your son? Did she say that he looked like your husband? And then she was like, yeah, that was rude. And it's like, okay, because Portia did the same thing. How is it rude? or mean, or out of line to say your child look like the father. How does that mean? Because your child do look like his daddy. Portia child do look like her daddy. Now, you saying that's something wrong with that doesn't mean that you don't, like, do you think your own spouse is ugly? Like, <laughs> that shouldn't be an insult is what I'm trying to say he gave the baby half the baby's DNA so obviously the baby gonna look like one of y'all <laughs> it was Shay they think the daddy got ugly <laughs> that husband comment was a little weird I don't get it it really reflects how Ashley feels about Michael thank you it, it reveals how you feel about your own partner that ain't nobody else like that's your fault for choosing him if you don't want your baby to look like him. Like, I mean, why would you have a baby with this person <laughs> if you really felt that way? That's not an insult for me to say your child look like your husband. Like, that's because Ashley knows the father of your crib keeper. Oh, my goodness. Well, the portion of defense, Eva said in an argument, it was intended to be shade. Okay. Okay. But I still, at the end of the day, that's the child's father. For me to say the child looks like the father, I mean, you can't be too mad about that. It's the way she said it. Yeah, well, even she was being shady, like she looks like a boy. But the thing is, the baby looked like the daddy. He did. She do. To me. 
But okay, maybe it could it could have been used as shade. But I just I I like if somebody told me my child looked like the father, it's either the child gonna look like me, the father, the grandma, somebody. Okay, y'all saying it's the way she said it. I guess. Okay. Um. So then we get to the colorism debate. And, you know, I look, I'm light-skinned. So I, you know, me telling somebody about how they feel, like a dark-skinned person about how they feel about colorism, that's like a white person telling a black person, you know, how they should feel about um, racism. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to go there, but I do see a disparity with how um, Ashley is treated versus how um, Candace is treated because I know Candace has a big mouth, but so do Ashley. You know what I'm saying? Ashley has done and said uh, a lot worse to people than what Candace has, but people be quick to forgive Ashley and forget what Ashley has done in the past too. Like this season, it's like everything Ashley had ever done was wiped clean because she had a baby. Like everything, like it was just washed away. We forgot everything Ashley did. She's done some terrible things. And for Candace, even though she's changed her tune from last season, she reeled herself in. She did, She was not quick to argue this season. She tried to do better this season, but people kept trying to throw back on her all the stuff that she did last season and she wasn't allowed to change. And I don't, I, I do think maybe that maybe it was a little colorism it's it you know what i'm saying because i'm trying to figure out what's the difference i'm trying ashley and giselle have gotten away with more than everyone else put together thank you that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying ashley went on an apology tour kiss but she wanted to secure her job She did something. She did something. Cause I'm just like, how, like y'all really did forget everything, Ashley. They didn't bring up, like they did some flashbacks here and there. And, and Giselle, I will say Giselle did tell her, you know, Candace was acting the same way you acted before you had your baby. And I feel like Ashley ain't changed personally. She just didn't have enough time to express it in the season. But, um, yeah. Let me see. Uh, I'm not going to read that Dean comment. Uh, not being able to describe people's actions continues the colorism poison. Um, but what actually pulled was a classic pretending you were for single family members the same as shading family members. All the shows do it, and it's always lame. Ashley and Giselle have kind of... Okay, I read that. Now, Ashley went on. Okay, Ashley got away with all her smack because she had a baby, and she was in a different emotional space. Maybe if Candace has a baby, everyone will forgive her Twitter fingers, too. <laughs> I don't know, y'all, but I, I, I just feel like it's something to think about. You know, I think it's something to think about um, and consider. People are scared of Giselle for some reason. I say that all the time. Like, I don't know why people are so scared of Giselle. I, they weren't scared on this reunion, though. No. They weren't scared this time. <laughs> no, nah, uh, Monique didn't bring the bird. Thank God. Hold on, y'all. Okay. My husband's family always on him about the dark, how dark his hair isn't soft like theirs, but they're teasing, but it hurts him. No, that's definitely, that's definitely colorism to tease someone over dark skin. And that's texturism to talk about somebody's hair because it's not, you know, 
soft and curly. They weren't scared of Giselle because they jumped her. They did. <laughs> Monique was getting on my nerves during that scene, so you'd rather be called a hood rat. Yeah, I, I think I think she was a little dismissive. I do think Monique was coming off a little bit dismissive. Like, just because you don't see it that way or you don't care um, about those terms being thrown around, thrown around towards you, that doesn't mean necessarily that she hasn't received that because of her skin tone. Because Wendy is uh, darker than Monique is. So that's how colorism works. You know, the darker skinned person gets it worse than someone with a lighter skin tone, even if you are brown or whatever. So, yeah. Um, And also, I just... I, I agree with Robin when she said, you know, as a light-skinned person, just watch the words that you use to describing dark-skinned people because there is a narrative that has been, you know, formed, a stereotype. And just be careful not to play into that with your words because, you know, that's a part of it. All right. Um, so in between the scenes and they got a break, um, Ashley asked Monique, could Candace, her and Candace ever work it out? And she said, nah, too much has went down. And she basically was alluding to the fact that that binder, she was going to pull out all receipts, <laughs> receipts on everybody. She had a tab for everybody and she was ready to go in. So we got a little bit of foreshadowing right there. She had a tab for Karen. Giselle out in the lung, the jungle getting attacked by lion. <laughs> okay. So then, um, you know, Karen was pretty much getting Giselle together this entire first part. Um, and, um, you know, Giselle kind of was, she didn't really have too many good comebacks. She was mostly just sitting there like, whatever, that's your opinion. Mm, this and that. That's kind of why she was really getting ate up because she really didn't have too many good comebacks or, you know, you have a lot to say in the confessionals, but then when you get in front of these people, it's kind of like, cat got done. Like, oh. Maybe because some of that stuff was true, she really couldn't defend herself. <laughs> um, but then she tried to snap back, to clap back and say, you know, we know you took your Geritol this morning and, you know, a just joke. And it's like, okay, but Giselle, you're 50. I did not know Giselle was 50. I did not know Giselle was 50. She looks amazing because I would have never thought she was 50. Um, girl, you're 50. Like, you really can't talk, call Karen old if she you're only seven years younger than her. You can't do that. Y'all are in the same age bracket. <laughs> Y'all are in the same age bracket. You can't call her old. You just can't. And I'm glad, I'm glad Karen said that back to her. Like, girl, you're 50. You can't use that no more. You can't be calling me old. Her father should have come defended her. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't use that. Um, And then they got into her business, shutting down her. Every Hue Beauty shut down because of C-19. She couldn't get the materials she needed to um keep the business going. And um, Karen said she heard that it got liquidated. And um, obviously G Giselle denied that. I mean, it would be easy to say that C-19 ruined your business. Um, that's a great excuse. So I guess we'll never really know what happened. Unless, some, unless Monique has some receipts in her book for that as well. <laughs> I kind of felt bad for Giselle a little bit too. because she, But she, do, she deserves it. I can't even lie. She deserves it. But she deserves it because she clowned Karen. Pretty much anytime Karen comes out with any kind of business or anything she's trying to sell, she always down talks it. She's always the first one to question it. She's always um, talking down her business. And I don't think that's cool because, you know what I'm saying, that could affect her sales. Some people could really be listening to Giselle and believe her and not want to buy something from Karen. And that's not cool at all because now you affected my, you affected my money. That's not cool. That's not because if you talk bad about my business, I'm feeling away. You 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 might be turning people away from my business. 
You know what I'm saying? And, you know, anybody should understand that. Okay, so finally, whew. This is this is the nail in the coffin for Giselle. I don't know how she's going to... Hopefully, don't nothing else happen to her in the next parts of this reunion because I don't think she could take anything. This this was like the last straw. Like, I don't know how... Like, I would just literally pass out on stage if anything worse than this happened to Giselle. <laughs> for real. Hopefully, this is like her last... The last thing because... Whew, she gonna need to be escorted out. Somebody gonna have to escort her out. Um. <laughs> okay. So then Karen brings up the fact that Jamal supposedly had a baby during the time that they that she got back together with Pastor Jamal Bryant. And let me say this. I I'm I think me, the audience, Giselle's daughter. Didn't nobody want Giselle to get back with Jamal, especially after what he's done. He's had multiple babies on you during your marriage. Um, just completely disrespectful. No respect for you. Hold on, y'all. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, she, um, I lost my train of thought. Hold on, y'all. Sorry, y'all. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh, I was just saying, it was just disappointing to see her get back with someone who did you that dirty. Like, it just makes it like you have no respect for yourself. It just makes it seem like you don't, you know what I'm saying? What kind of example is this setting for your daughters? Your daughters were totally against it the whole season. That was something else that was so cringy to watch because they, they were just like, they all but said, we do not like him do not be with him please like they just they don't even want their own mom to be with their dad who 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 really is like that who which most i feel like a lot of children would rather their parents be together no they do not want pastor jamal bryant in that house period okay so it just, it didn't make sense because Giselle came on the show talking bad about Jamal. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. She had me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm sitting up here like, I don't like him because of what he did. You know, I, I'm sitting up here like totally against him. And, you know, I'm just, he's a pastor as well. So for him to be doing all that stuff was really janky. And then you get back with him. So obviously people are wondering, what is the motive? What is the motive which you getting back with him? Is it for the money? Is it for the storyline? Because we need to, what is your incentive for getting back with this man? It's strange that Giselle drives a Mini Cooper with three teenage daughters. I don't, I personally, I don't, I don't like Mini Coopers. I don't, they too little for me. She needs to stop putting her kids on TV. Those conversations about the father were so awkward. Exactly. And they're going to live on. I hope he actually really is making an effort to mend his relationship with those girls. Because really, that's a shame. And for you to be a pastor, I don't know how you set a good example of being a father. If you have your kids on TV talking about you like that and, and viewing you in that way, that is not a good example. So anyway. Yeah, Karen called her out and said basically that he had a baby on her and she didn't deny it. She didn't deny it. And um 
you know, that was like kind of like the beginning of the end for Giselle <laughs> because um, she, you know, she claims they're together and, you know, they're doing good or whatever, but supposedly he has a baby on it. You know, he's good for having a baby on the way, child. Then Monique said his real girlfriend has been in contact with her. That's when she pulled out the binder pulled out all the text messages between the two pictures of him laid up in the bed with her they didn't show it or nothing but she claimed she had it and then um and was like well you know how do we know this is real do you have the number she read off his number and he asked her is that his number giselle said yes i was like oh, 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 oh. giselle just run just run off stage like mari run to the back run to the back I would have been, I just would have been like, oh my, oh. I cannot, I cannot. She didn't review any of them. She didn't, she did not deny anything. The only thing she was, the only thing she said was like, you know, I'm not going to believe anything that comes from Monique. Girl. She's, um. So Monique said, the girlfriend said, this is all fake for TV. And um, yeah, like it, there was no denying it. There was no denying it. See, I'm a woman of evidence. Monique came with all the receipts, nothing left to say after that. The tea was warm though. We had heard about it. Yeah, we had, we, a lot of people already accused their relationship of being fake. It was just the fact that she had receipts. That it was just like, ooh, and and Giselle didn't deny it. Well, she denied that. Did she even deny that it was fake? I don't even think she denied that. When she read that number, the stage blew up. I know. I know she. I know she just could have left her body right then and there. I had secondhand embarrassment when Monique read that number. She didn't refute any of those receipts. I would have just confessed that it was just for a storyline. Yeah, like if it's just for a storyline, you if she would have just said that, it would have just debunked everything. But then at the same time, would nobody ever believe her ever again? And she probably would lose her job. Probably, I don't know. Giselle was awfully quiet. Mm. It was for a storyline. It was all in the kids' faces. Mm-hmm. Whew. Even Robin was shocked. I know. And, and Robin was doing her best to try to be a good friend and try to, like, defend her. What is the point? With, what is your motive? Giselle, just, I mean, uh, Robin, you better stay out of it before she pull up your tab. You better stop before she pull up your tab. <laughs> Y'all. And then Candace, I'm just like, Candace, shut up. Shut up. This is why I can't be team Candace. The only, the only time I'm team Candace is in this whole thing between her and Monique beating her up. I don't think that was right. But outside of that, that's why I'm kind of mad that Everybody is making me have to defend Candace because Candace do get on my last nerve. Why are you jumping in this? This don't have nothing to do with you. This don't have nothing to do with you. This is between her and Giselle because Giselle do shade Monique every time she get a chance. It's her turn. I thought Monique was going to shoot at Robin for getting involved. I just knew she was going to pull out her tab. She probably going to pull it out later. They kept asking her during the season why and how they got back together. They were skeptical. Mm -hmm. Candace always running her mouth. Her daughter watched this episode, and I'm sure they are embarrassed. Candace tried to jump jump in. Yeah, it was just like, girl, you better stop before you get hit hit with a crossfire. Just stay quiet. Like, just stay quiet. You always defending the underdog. Um, I defend the people that I think needs defending. You know, that's why I'm not trying to defend Giselle because she don't. She don't need no defending. She deserved this. <laughs> she deserved this. All all the talking she do, she just wasn't prepared. 
she wasn't prepared herself. See, Giselle should have had something to uh, throw back at Monique, but she didn't have nothing. She was unprepared. Monique was laser focused on Giselle and she was not letting up. I know when Monique was reading the receipts and Candace kept saying stuff like, I was like, Monique's getting ready for you. Mm hmm. Yeah, she's going to end up getting Candace too. Candace's actions make her indefensible to me. Um, she, in in that one instance, for me, she does. I don't think she, I don't think that was necessary. I think that was completely out of line. Um, and oh, let me read this part. Um, so the, the last thing Monique Monique read her with these last couple of things. She said, "Your kids ain't even happy about it." You got a different man sitting behind you every season. And then Karen went in here with the last one too. Ask her, was um Jamal coming? And he ain't even coming. And and then Monique called her a fraud. And it was just like signs still delivered. They ain't no coming back from that, Giselle. I ain't no coming back from that. Now, every time you get in a relationship, everybody's gonna th think it's fake. You're going to get the Kenya treatment. <laughs> You're going to get the Kenya treatment. Now, honestly, I don't even think up until this point, I don't think Giselle has lied or um, or been lying about the like her different relationships or who she's went on a date with because she's not an ugly woman. I don't think it it's hard for her to get a date or, you know, get a little, little relationship here or there. But this one is looking it's looking bad. And so now, like I said, I think she's going to get the Kenya treatment. I think every time she gets in a relationship or people are, are, are always going to question it. They're always going to think that her relationships are fake. Even because even when Kenya got married and had a baby, people still thought she was paying what you call it. What's her husband name? They thought she was still paying Mark. The kids love Sherman more than, than their father. Ooh, mm, that's a hard pill to swallow. What time is it? Oh, that's a hard pill to swallow. I'm going to have to jump off of here in a minute, y'all. Let me see what y'all saying. It's her attitude. Mm -hmm. Monique had all the girls on mute. I know they, they were scared. If they said something, she was going to pull up her tab. They tab. Like, Robin didn't say too much if you noticed. She wasn't trying to have her back too much if Giselle is smart she wouldn't bring another man on their show but what's going to be her storyline Giselle don't really have a storyline like she would have to like what what else would be her storyline I mean everybody else has a man you know what I'm saying everybody else has a man and and that's an integral part of their storyline for Robin it's Juan I mean Robin that's her whole storyline basically it's her and Juan um, Ashley Darby and her husband. We we know the controversy behind that. That's going to keep her, her story in line. Um, even Monique with her husband. Without her husband, she wouldn't have the money that she has. And, and we saw, got to see a little bit of their tension that they had this season. Um, Karen and her husband. You know, are, are they going to make it? Are they not? Uh, Wendy and her husband. Um, I guess he's not too much of her storyline. Um, but he did bring something to our storyline, you know, with He's estranged from his family, so a little bit. Um, but we get to see that she has a good hu husband and a good, you know, that's a good dynamic to see. Um, who else? Candace and her husband. You know, do they actually have money? <laughs> or is she going to get it from her mom? Like, what's the, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's storyline, their husband plays a pretty big part of their storyline. So if Giselle doesn't have a man, she don't even really got a storyline. I mean, I hate that it have to be like that, like, but it is called Housewives of Potomac. That's kind of the point. <laughs> it's not like Atlanta. Atlanta, you could be a single as a dollar bill. Now everyone is so called above the rumors, but weren't they weren't spreading lies about Karen and Monique? It was so funny then. True. I definitely would have been quiet. 
<laughs> Even Andy was on mute. She probably got an Andy tap. Look, I, I got one on you too, Andy. Them girls used to light up and sing like a choir. <laughs> Um, their tab is coming though. I believe it. I'm on the edge of my seat for the next episode. <laughs> Robin is totally irrelevant, boring. The show can go on. I do think her storyline with Robin, is, I mean, with Juan is so tired. Like, I don't even want to see their their wedding. That's how over them I am because they've been dragging this out for the longest. Karen didn't rely on the Black Bill Gates that much this season. She created her magic. She did. She did because it was just like she don't know if she's gonna be with Ray or not. That was like a major part because it was like, you know, she made a big deal out of it. I mean, even when they did their little um their meeting with the therapist and stuff, that was you know, and the women brought it up a few times too. So I do think that was a definitely a part. If she didn't have that, it, her storyline would be a little shallow. Those girls used to light up when Charmaine got. You did not have to say it twice, J Dub. <laughs> and that was week when Karen asked about every hue and brought they then brought up Ladam. Yeah, because I mean Ladam is Ladam still? She did say that it's being sold in store still, right? It's at least on a website, right? I'm not gonna look, I'm not gonna downplay anybody's business. I'm not, you're supposed, like, if you're going on a show like this, you're supposed to start a business. I don't care if you are selling crap. You're supposed to, you're supposed to get on, on here and make a business and make money, period. So I will never, I will never, unless you're scamming people, I'm not with scamming. But other than that, why did Robin have those Adidas stripes in her hair? <laughs> I hated her hair. What was that about? I think I think Robin's best hairstyle is a sleek, like platinum blonde bob, a line. That's her best style. That's the best look she's ever had to me. Ladam is still in Bloomingdale's. Mm, that's a flex. Karen had to had every right to come for every hue. They played Karen and asked if it was a real fragrance. I agree. Robin's hair was terrible. I agree with that too. <laughs> All right, y'all. I've been on here for almost an hour. I really do have to go. I did not mean to stay on here that long, but um, thank you for everyone that showed up. I love you and I will see you in the next video. I'm going to try to get my skincare video up real soon and also a rant video up this week. So y'all be looking for that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If y'all came in here late, I'm going to put the replay up. So be looking for that tonight later on tonight and i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in my next one peace shout out to you bossy a new subscriber welcome to Rosa.